printing money is bad, mm-hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> but I mean, can a state do what it wants? I mean, what, do you what, want to refight the Civil War? What, yeah, but what about the Tenth Amendment? <laughs> you know, what about the Tenth Amendment? Yeah? Yeah. What about it? Okay. Are you, are you referring to the list of suggestions again? <laughs> is, oh, yeah. So is can, that what you are, are you saying that Colorado is on the plastic, too? <laughs> yes, they are. The state of Colorado, you bet. Oh, my goodness. I was watching a special Wait yesterday. <laughs> Colorado's on the plastic, too, and not on the organic <laughs> yes, cotton and, couch? You know, the state of Colorado is definitely on plastic. Oh, that's right. It's the state of Colorado rather mm. than Colorado. Colorado, yes. Oh, yeah. Why did I forget that? Yeah, folks, if you look, I don't even know if I want to tell you this, but I'm going to go on. If you look at your thing for your mortgage, right, your mortgage papers, mm-hmm. they'll say the state of Texas. which and is In not, this state. In this state, which is not Texas, right? No. Tell them the difference, Andrew. Well, it's the corporate entity that is of Texas, so it's the state of Texas. It's kind of like a cloud. It's like a cloud. Yes, it is. It's, just it's like, better than my plastic, Patrick. It's just like it's a, a cloud. cloud. It's a cloud thing up in the air. It's called the state of Texas. That's right. And it's not Texas. That is and right. And why do they do that? So that they can create a corporate entity that doesn't have to follow the rules of uh, common law. Really? Those are rascals. So... Is that why one cannot um, um, fight or um, uh, property taxes? Is that the main well, reason? It would depend who you're going after. Obviously, if you're going <laughs> to file an appeal for the state of Texas, well, yeah, you're not going to have much success. Yeah, and you know, recently, isn't I, that interesting? It yeah. is interesting. Really? Recently, there was a case in 1967, and this was before that you know, ultimate merger of law and equity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could look it up, Loving v. Virginia, right? And it's one of those civil rights cases which invalidate laws that prohibit interracial marriage. Okay. But it is Loving v. Virginia. Loving v. Virginia. Yeah. Okay. Not the state of Virginia. Virginia. And it, yeah, it's in the because this is the fiftieth anniversary of that decision, I oh, believe. Okay. Or, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think sixty-seven. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this was a ca- this was a case that of um, organic law uh, dealing with the Virginia, the, the organic real state, the, the real, real thing, not the state and of Virginia, not the state of, but Virginia tried to say that oh no, this black man and this white woman, or vice versa, <laughs> yeah. uh, can't, can't get married. Okay. Uh, the marriage doesn't exist, yeah. and it was on the organic couch that they said this, <laughs> right? You know, no plastic, right on oh. the cotton. Oh. And so the Supreme Court said, "Oh yeah, well you're out." You know that obviously, you state cannot do something like that unless they're on the plastic. Then they can do. Unless they're the state of Virginia. <laughs> That's right. The state of Virginia can do all sorts so, of things. So, so were these were these attorneys so brain dead they didn't get that? It was too early, Patrick. What do you mean? It was very early in the process, you know, that... Um, when all this stuff started Yeah, moving now. into commercial code, UCC becoming the law of the land. And this was a holdover case for years. Wow. You know, it, huh. it made its way up to the Supreme Court. It didn't start there in 1967. It ended there in 67. And so, you know, you got a bunch. You got a bunch. So look into jurisdiction and law. Um, you know, here in my uh, hmm. here in my uh, uh, city, huh, borough of Hawthorne, the borough of Hawthorne, New Jersey, a subdivision of the state of New Jersey, <laughs> and, and uh, which is uh, oh, also boy. a subdivision of the county of Passaic. Oh yeah, that's right. Not even Passaic, but yeah, Passaic, not the Passaic county, county of, but the county of Passaic, and so. The county of Passaic decides that we've got a park in this town that was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, the Olmsted brothers, uh-huh. and built. Yeah. Same guys that did Central Park. Uh-huh. Big, beautiful, Goffle Brook Park, man. It's yeah. a historical, beautiful park. Yeah. And <laughs> they decide that they're going to put a turf field, artificial turf, for the soccer players. Sure. And the council and the mayor go wild. Man, I can't believe you're going to do that. You're not going to do with... plastic grass in our place? Yeah, right? exactly, in our pretty park. Well, the county of had jurisdiction, and this, and this borough of said, no, no, we don't want it. Well, guess who's got to sue the county of? And it's all a jurisdictional question. Now, the general thought would be, hey, wait a minute. This park's in Hawthorne. 
Hawthorne has jurisdiction. And the county of says, well, borough of is in our county. We have jurisdiction. And the state says, well, state of, you're in our state, so we have jurisdiction. This whole question of who has jurisdiction over what is the root of this entire legal issue. And if they can keep the jurisdiction out of the common law or out of the Constitution, then the Constitution does not apply. It just just doesn't doesn't apply. apply. Yeah. So, wow. That's why uh, uh, a long time ago, I took a one-year course, right, from from some attorney. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can prove to you, prove to you. By using the four organic laws, you know, yes. Constitution, mm-hmm. you know, Declaration of Independence, uh, Northwest Ordinance, Northwest Ordinance Articles and of Confederation. Articles of Confederation, I can prove to you that you do not live in the United States of America. That's right. Right. You live in Texas. I can yeah. prove it. Yeah. So I took this course, right? So, I mean, he, it's pretty tricky. I mean, boy, the, if you follow the bouncing ball of these four organic laws, but you get to the point where you really get what he's saying. And so he's technically correct. That's right. right. Technically, yes. on paper. But the problem is... Get into a venue where jurisdiction will be recognized. So explain what you just said there so well, people this, know. You know... <clears throat> so, 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 so people would know that they really do... Uh, they, well, they really are in the United States, even though this guy was right if they live in Nebraska. For because, there's no, because there's no remedy at law. You know, you have to, you have to work your way through administrative law before you can get to real common law. So by the time a case makes it to the Supreme Court, it's had it's had to run through the gauntlet, if you will. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> yeah. But could you take... If you had the money, could you take something through there? Mm, if you had the money. But the Supreme Court would never rule because the whole game would be up. Well, that... I mean... Is that the problem? <laughs> that's that's, that's the problem. essentially the problem. Oh, that's yeah. the problem, right, Andrew? So this is why they dismiss or work it through yeah. at the, you know, appeals level yeah. or... Uh, you know, in the district court, and try to never let it make its way to the case. So, if they have someone uh, like on Title Twenty Six is a perfect example. So, if you look at people uh, being convicted of failing to file an income tax return, right? right. You'll f- what you'll find is a bunch of people who have pled guilty to failing to file an income tax return. If that case were to make it all the way to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court would have to strike it down as unconstitutional. So uh, the IRS is quick to say, oh, we've got you on this and this and this and this. Plead guilty to one count of failing to file a tax return. And then they can point to these line of cases in 26 and say, look, it's well-established case law. This person's guilty of failing to file a tax return. So just another example, ADA, uh, excuse me, uh, the AMA, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The American Medical Association works hand in hand with the FDA. Oh yes, the Food and Drug <laughs> Administration. <laughs> and while a, a doctor might be doing something that's well within his purview, well within his rights, yeah. he's convicted of things like because he's he's in the corporation. He's in that corporation oh, seeking justice, and until he gets to a venue of ultimate jurisdiction, like the Supreme Court of the U.S., then. He um, or she is not really uh, going to have a constitution to stand on. Wow. They have administrative why, law. Why would the – let's go back to the constitution to say that somebody took it all the way up in the jurisdiction thing like the course I took. Well, I have one. Oh, I have one. Okay. Here you go. Okay. No state shall make anything okay. but right. gold and silver coin. Let's, and let's run that one up the flag. Ah. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? Ah. Oh, ah. my God. Yeah. yeah. How much money would that take? Yeah, well, it would take – Oh, Untold wow. amounts of money. Like they a, would fight it every step of the way. A couple million dollars, it, probably. Millions of dollars. Yeah. Just to take it to the Supreme Court. Right? I encountered a very, very, <laughs> Let's very... Let's do that someday. Yeah, right. Wouldn't well, you well, like I, to do it? Yeah. <laughs> would it be a trip? Yeah, no, it's been suggested to me before, and especially when I brought up, uh, you know, a uh-huh. lo- give me a lawyer. Okay, lawyer, I hold up a silver certificate. Yeah. And it says right on it... Uh, the, this certifies that there is on deposit in the Treasury of the United States one dollar in silver payable to the bearer on demand. Mm-hmm. Silver certificate. It's dated. It's signed. This is a contract. Yes. Yes. It's a contract. It's a silver certificate, a warehouse receipt. But if I go to any Federal Reserve bank, as it says right on it, and say, "Give me my dollar in silver." <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Now, the Constitution is very specific. No state shall make anything but gold and silver coin uh-huh. a tender payment of debt. So they start issuing certificates for coin, 
Mm -hmm. And then they eliminate the certificate altogether and move us all into commercial law and start giving us Federal Reserve notes. Mm -hmm. Now, my argument is, and I, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I have to emphasize this again, that in 1934, Franklin Roosevelt caused the corporate bankruptcy of the United States and suspended specie payment. What does that mean? It means specie payment means here is my silver certificate. Give me my silver dollar. Here is my $20 gold certificate. Give me my $20 gold piece. So it's exchangeable. Spe- specie payment, Spe- yes. Specie payment. Specie payment. Specie payment. Yeah. Okay, I got a specie, I want my payment. No, I got my payment, I want my specie. Here's oh, I'm my, sorry, I got to have back. Yeah, one. here's my chit, my certificate. My certificate. Here, I'm handing it to you. Give me my specie. Show me specie. the money. And throughout monetary history in the United States, individual commercial banks have suspended specie payment. So that's what you know, the bank run closing thing is all about, right? People show up at their local uh, bank of Dripping Springs. Right. Back when it was legal to have the bank of Dripping Springs unaffiliated with the Federal Reserve mm. and say, okay, get, here's my uh, bank of Dripping Springs bank note for $1. Give me my dollar. And a solvent bank takes their silver dollar, puts it on the counter, takes their certificate, marks it off the books, destroys it or pays it out again, whichever their charter calls for. And the system continues. But in the event that they don't have enough gold and silver coin, they suspend specie payment. The bank says, okay, effective immediately, we will no longer cash your notes for gold and silver coin. In 1934, this was ordered at the federal level. The president made that order. And for all banks in the United States. And uh, closed them until they could prove that they can open up in a solvent manner. Wow. And from that time to this, this idea of no state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debt has been suspended, like the debt ceiling was at one point. And so as it relates to money, without this jurisdiction, state of, federal district of, <laughs> Columbia, all right, without this corporate United States, there is no money, period. Just, well, forget it. Put it this way. Uh, The only money are the gold and silver coins of the Constitution, and very little, uh, if any, survive in in private hands. 